Hey guys, today I wanted to do a quick video and give you some tips on what you can do to learn how to pronounce your French R's. And this is a sound that exists in German and I think in most dialects of Portuguese, um, Hebrew, Standard Arabic, I believe, a bunch of different languages. Um, and a lot of times it's it's described as being pronounced kind of in the back of the throat. It sounds like R, something like that. Um, and this is a sound that's very difficult for a lot of native English speakers to learn how to pronounce because we don't have this sound in our language. Um, it doesn't exist in English. You just, you would never, there's no word that requires that sound, that R sound. Um, and we don't even really have anything that's even close to it. Um, we have a G sound, which is G, but that, to me, that, I mean, it's not really close. R and G. You can maybe hear a little bit of a similarity, but not very much. Um, so it's hard. It takes a certain amount of experimentation uh, with moving, you know, these muscles in a way that you're just not used to. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and so, let me pull this up. So this is the sounds that I want to talk about. Um, it looks like an upside down R and I have done a video on the IPA, several videos on the IPA in the past. That's the International Phonetic Alphabet. And if you don't know what the IPA is, I highly suggest you look that up. Um, check out some of my old videos. Maybe I'll link to them somewhere up here. Um, and look it up because that's going to be a big help. At least for me, it was a huge help in learning to pronounce sounds that are foreign to my language. Um, every sound that humans are able to utter with their mouths has one specific sound. So it's not like uh, the English alphabet where C can be pronounced like a K or like an S. It's not like this. It's one sound per letter. So it makes it um, a lot more explicit and it's really nice. And then the IPA, that's what the French R is spelled like. And um, you'll see here but the scientific name for this sound is a voiced uvular fricative. And you're looking at me like, Aaron, what does that mean? It means nothing. Uh, well, it does mean something. <laughs> it, uh, that's a scientific description of a speech sound. Um, three parts, each part means a certain thing. So let's talk about this voiced part. <clears throat> um, once you understand what these, what the three different parts of this description are, um, it'll make a lot more sense exactly what this French R is. So, voiced. This is a voiced sound. Now, the difference between voiced and voiceless is the vibrations of your vocal cords right here. Sorry, it just got really sunny all of a sudden. Let me see. Is that better? I don't want to be like pure white. All right. The difference between voiced and voiceless sounds is right here in your vocal cords. <clears throat> so go ahead and pronounce a long S sound. S and put your hand right here. Hold, like hold on to your throat right around your Adam's apple region. S then pronounce a long Z sound. Z now Z and S are very similar in almost every way. They differ only in the voicing. Z is voiced. Z. That's why if you hold your hand right here, you should be able to feel a little vibration. Z. And the only difference between the Z and the S is that S is voiceless. So when you pronounce an S, you should feel nothing right here if you're pronouncing it properly. Z. So go back and forth a few times maybe between Z and S. Z. Z. You should be able to feel a big difference right here um, when you're pronouncing the Z. And that's because the Z is voiced, the S is voiceless. Uh, you could do the same thing with a V and an F, or the two different ways of pronouncing TH, like the TH in that and the TH in think. Um, same difference. The only difference is voicing. <clears throat> um, so this is a voiced uvular fricative. We understand now what voiced means. It means your vocal cords are vibrating. Um, it's also a fricative. And this word 
So the word fricative should remind you maybe of friction. And the reason being that uh, any fricative sound is essentially you're closing off a portion of your vocal tract and you're almost closing it off. You're just allowing a very small little gap in there uh, for air to pass through. And that tiny little gap is making kind of a hissing sound or kind of a frictiony sound. Um, and that's where these sounds get their specific, uh, that their distinctive sound. So um, S is a fricative sound. Z, uh, Z is for that matter as well. And the sh, whenever you do sh, that's a fricative sound. Um, and you contrast that with sounds like a D or a T where you just uh, essentially build up some pressure in your mouth and then release it all at once. Um, those are not fricatives. Uh, those are what we call stop sounds. Um, but this French R is a fricative. Um, um, so it's a voiced fricative. It's also a uvular sound. And the word uvular comes from the word uvula. And if you're familiar with, with that term, that's a little punching bag at the back of your throat in the Bugs Bunny cartoons whenever someone is singing in the opera or something. Um, I'm not going to show you mine, that's gross. But uh, if you look in the mirror, open your mouth real wide, stick your tongue out, you should be able to see your uvula dangling in the back there. Um, and that's where this sound is pronounced. So I said that fricative sounds uh, mean that you're, you're making a, a, a tiny little gap for air to pass through. And that's where the, your uvula is where the air is passing through. This, this, that's where this constriction is taking place for that frictiony sound to happen. Um, so essentially what you're doing is you're taking your tongue and you're moving it back in your mouth really close to your uvula. And then when air passes through between your tongue and your uvula, that's where this... Uh, that's where this frictiony sound is coming from. And that's all you need to know, really, uh, in order to pronounce this sound. Now, obviously, um, knowing how the sound is produced is way different from actually being able to produce it. So I wanna give you some tips uh, that you can use to practice pr producing this sound. Um, there's a lady on YouTube named Alexa. I think her name is Alexa, I guess. I haven't watched her videos in a long time, but I remember watching her uh, do a video on putting a pencil in your mouth in order to teach yourself how to pronounce this sound. Um, and not this way. Uh, you put a pencil in your mouth like this, like that. Um, and I think what she was going for here is that if you put your pencil way back here, it's, it's kind of forcing your tongue to go back as well. Um, to, so it's closing that gap with your uvula. Uh, this technique never really worked for me, but you know, if you have a pencil, go ahead and try it. <laughs> Put it back here and see if that forces your tongue back enough in order to, to make you produce this sound. Um, maybe look her video up, but like I said, it didn't work for me. That didn't really help. All I ended up with was just a saliva covered pencil. Um, but I think the, at least the principle is sound. She's trying to make you push your tongue backwards, um, because that's what you need to do in order to pronounce this sound. Um, a lot of people I've heard say this sound is pronounced in the back of the throat, which isn't technically true because, you know, this is your throat right here. Um, and your uvula is not in your throat. It's, you know, it, your throat is here. Your uvula is like right up here. Um, now, earlier in this video, I said that um, this French R might be kind of similar to a G, how we would pronounce a G. And um, I, I wouldn't say it's really similar. I would say it's probably the closest sound that we have in English. Um, and that's because G is a voiced sound. If you were going to try to like really build up a G and then let it out, you would go G. And so you should, you should feel that... Uh, that vibration in your vocal cords right here. If you put your hand there, g so it's a voiced sound. Um, now this is not a fricative, it's a stop um, because you're stopping the air and then releasing it all at once in your G. 
Um, but the place of articulation, or the place where you're closing off the, the constriction, closing off your vocal track a little bit in order to, to produce that friction, it's close. The G is what we call a velar sound, while the, the French R is a uvular sound. These places of articulation are very close to one another. So if you imagine yourself <clears throat> pronouncing a G, don't imagine, actually like start to do it, but don't actually pronounce the sound, just like start preparing yourself to pronounce it. Feel what your tongue does. So like if I'm preparing myself to pronounce this sound, I can feel my tongue going back into my, uh, into my mouth a little bit before I pronounce this G. G that is close to where your tongue needs to be in order to pronounce the, the voiced uvular fricative. Um, your uvula is a little bit further back than where you would pronounce your G. So if, it might help just to try to pronounce it, start pronouncing a G and then move your tongue a little bit further back in that same direction. Um, just try closing your eyes and just picturing your tongue moving further back. I don't know if this is going to help or not, but it's worth a try. It, it's close to your place of articulation for your G. Uh, the the strategy that helps me the most with learning this fricative sound, uh, this uvular sound, I should say, is um, imagining yourself gargling. And in fact, we don't even uh, need to imagine ourselves gargling. We can go one better and actually do a little bit of gargling. Now, if you think about gargling, what's going on? You're putting some water in your mouth. Um, now, you don't want this water to run down your throat, so you're closing off the back of your mouth. Um, but that's not gargling, just closing off your mouth. When you're gargling, you, you want to open your mouth a little bit so that you're able to push air up through your lungs and out. And that's what does the gurgling, bubbly sound. Um, and you have to have that opening for the air to come through, but it can't be really open you can't have, you know, you can't have your mouth wide open. Um, or sorry, the well, your mouth is wide open, but you can't have the back of your throat wide open. Otherwise, that water is just going to run down. So the trick to gargling is you have a, a tiny little constriction for the air to come through, um, but it's not enough for the water to go down. Uh, so the trick to this is just go ahead and put a little bit of water in your mouth. and practice that and feel what is going on in your mouth um, in the back of your throat try to pay attention to what your muscles are actually doing there and while you're gargling you're paying attention then you spit out your water I don't have a sink here so I just swallowed it but you spit out your water or you drink it and then you try to recreate that same thing without the water, with just the air. Um, so you're pushing your tongue back in your mouth, creating a small little gap for the air to come through and then pushing air out. And that's going to help you produce your uvular fricative. Um, now, of course, you can do this in a voiced way or a voiceless way. That would be the difference between R or R. Um, so, obviously, the only difference there is um, vibrations in your vocal cords, just like the difference between a, a Z and an F, a Z and an S, or a V and an F. Um, what else can I say about this? Um, yeah, that's. I guess that's mainly it. You just want to practice. Um, that's going to be the key. Uh, practice moving your tongue around. It's going to feel weird. It's going to be feel real foreign to you because this is not something in your native language. Unless you speak a language that has this sound in it, in which case you probably aren't watching this video. Um, but try experimenting moving your, your tongue around in the back of your throat till you get that R sound. Um, and that's gonna, eventually you'll find it and you'll start to be able to reproduce it more and more often. Um, and then you have to practice. You have to keep practicing. You want that muscle memory down pat in order to keep being able to produce this sound well. Um, and so that's 
the main way of pronouncing this French R. Um, if you ever listen to Edith Piaf's uh, version of Je ne regrette rien, or Je ne regrette rien, um, it's a famous song by Edith Piaf. It's in the Dove chocolate commercial that's been on recently. It was in Inception. Um, and she has this really interesting way of pronouncing her R's in that song. It's really pronounced. Um, and she's actually, uh, if you listen to that real closely, she's actually not pronouncing a voiced uvular fricative in that song. Um, what she's doing there is called a voiced uvular trill. Um, and a trill, a trill is different than a fricative. Like I said, a fricative, you're making a very narrow gap for the air to pass through, giving it a frictiony sound. With a trill, you have two articulators that are flapping back and forth together, together really quick. So this is like, um, the most common trill I can think of is the Spanish R, which is an alveolar trill. It means you're, you're taking your tongue and you're flapping your tongue up against your alveolar ridge, which is right behind your teeth which is where you would pronounce an N or, or a T or a D sound. Um, so that's where the R sound in Spanish comes from. It's a trill, you're flapping. The other one is a bilabial trill. Bilabial meaning two lips. You're flapping your two lips together. R -r -r -r. I'm not entirely sure if this is a sound that actually exists in any language, but you can certainly do it. Um, and so this, this uvular trill that you hear Edith P.F. pronouncing, that's almost kind of like a Chewbacca sound really, <laughs> if you listen to Chewbacca really closely. Um, and I can't really do that sound. Let me, I'm gonna try to do it, but I might embarrass myself here. It's like, uh, uh. so it's not, it's not that fricative where you're just letting the air pass through. You're, it's a, it's a trill where your back of your tongue and your uvula are kind of flapping together and allowing that air to go through in little spurts. And I can't really do it. <laughs> I'm making a fool of myself now. Um, but I would recommend uh, listening to that because that's interesting uh, if you're interested in phonetics and phonology. Um, sorry, I went off on a, a real long tangent there. Uh, what else? I guess that's really all I have to say about this. Uh, just keep practicing. Find words that you can practice this song, this, uh, this sound, rouge, uh, rien, uh, I don't know, anything that starts with R. And find words that end with R, too. Um, quatre. That would be, so, let's see, how deep do I want to go here? Quatre. That, the, the R at the end of, of the word quatre in four, that's actually a, a voiceless uvular, a voiceless uvular fricative, because it's following a T. Um, so a lot of times, in at the end of words, autre. Um, at the end of words, if you have uh, a T or another voiceless sound, and if this um, if this R is following one of those voiceless sounds, then you have what's called assimilation your R will actually take on the voiceless status of the voiceless consonant that's coming before it. Um, so there, are, a lot of times there are various different ways of pronouncing these sounds, and those are called allophones. I talked about that briefly um, in my, uh, my book review of the, uh, that I did a few weeks ago. Um, this video is going way longer than I expected because I've gone off on a lot of tangents, but Keep practicing your R's. Um, let me know if this video helped and also let me know if there's any sounds that you uh, really want help learning how to pronounce. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys next Monday.